it's Bernie here from Stampin' Eat and welcome to another Friday card making session with me. I hope this finds you well and that you've had an amazing week. Today it's about 10 weeks I think to Christmas and I thought it would be a good idea for the next few weeks to show you a few things that I like to make from my craft room for gifts and tags and crackers and all those fun things that make Christmas um, or contributes to making Christmas really special and especially if you are a paper crafter I don't know if you like me but I love making gift bags gift tags and crackers from my own stash and not necessarily going to the shops and just picking up a box of crackers or gift bags so I thought it would be a good idea for the next few weeks to help you with some ideas. So today we're going to look at making this gift box. So as you can see, it's quite a generous size box. It will easily, let me tell you how much, how deep it is. It's about six inches um, wide, six inches square, and it's three inches deep. So you can get a pretty decent gift in there and once you've grasped the concept of making a box which is basically taking the width of your object and looking at how deep it is and those become your score lines then you can actually change it and make gift boxes to any size and as you can see here I've got three gift boxes if I move it aside one is teeny teeny tiny which would fit some post-it notes one's a bit bigger and one's bigger still but same concept that you just take the measurement of what you're wanting by the depth and that becomes your score line the tricky bit is making sure your um, lid fits snugly but i'm going to show you a nifty little to, um, tip that will help you with that so let's get started I thought today for this project that I was going to, um, I want to demonstrate the beautiful Splendid Thoughts paper. There is such stunning paper in that. Um, and for this project, you will need two sheets of 12 by 12. This one, the light is not actually doing it much justice, but it's a soft sea foam. And then you've got this on the reverse, but I want the shiny side. You'll also need a piece of basic white, oh, well, sorry, not basic white. You'll just need a piece of cardstock 12 by 12. Now, I do prefer to use cardstock at the bottom just so that it's a bit firmer. And any cardstock will do. I This is white, um, so that will work well with what I want to do. So if you've got a scoring tool, then that's a great tool to use. If you haven't, you can also use your paper trimmer that's got a scoring tool on it if you have a stamping up paper trimmer. You are going to need to score at the three inch mark. I just want to move this light and hopefully it stops there. That's better. Um, and I'm going to just come in slightly so that you can see. So we're going to be scoring at the three inch mark going all the way down. I then turn it, I found find this easier, turn it again at the three inch mark, turn it one more time, and for the final time, three inches. So in here, you should have a, let's just go back out, you should have a square, you might not pick it up on the camera, with four blocks, with four little squares. So set that to the side for now. We are going to come back to that. For your lid, you need to trim this down to 9 by 9. And I just want to bring in my paper trimmer while I do that. So the beauty of the stamping up paper trimmer is that it has an extendable arm. So you're going to take it to 9 inches and trim and keep the off cut because we're going to use that as a label and turn it around line it on the nine inches 
and you now have your lid so you can set your paper trimmer to the side and bring back in your scoring tool so with your lid what i find easiest is to butt it up on the side but then to move it a little bit and for this one we're scoring at one and a half turn it around butt it up move it a little bit because we need to give it wiggle room turn it around and move it a little bit at one and a half And you can now set your scoring tool to the side for now. Let me just move that out the way without throwing things all over the floor. Okay, now with your bone folder, you will need, you see those, there are your score lines. You're going to turn it in, so your, your, um, your mountain, as I call it, is inside we're going to give it a good burnish so you have your lid and you're going to repeat the process for the base now these white sheets um stamping up used to send the design the series paper and the cardstock with these white sheets and i used to always save them but they've now moved to a like a cardboard which is a pity i, I take it it's a lot more economical to have that but i used to love saving these because it was really awesome so i'm just going to go out a little bit because i want to show you with this corner how we are going to trim it so you've got your corner over here so you're going to come in with your paper snips on that score line and there is a score line that's going across that is where you are going to stop you're wedging in skew you're wedging into the corner like so and turn it around and repeat so you are only cutting the straight and you are wedging in on that corner and you turn it again and that's going to become it's going to make a lot more sense when I show you how we put this together in just a few minutes. I just want to make sure you can see. All right, so that's your... So by now you should have four flaps and they all facing a different direction. Turn your cardstock upside down and for this part I like to use my silicon mat underneath and I like to use a very sturdy um, adhesive and for this I like using my stamp and seal plus. I just want to get that stock out the way now you're going to adhere on the two edges of each side and I do like to just lift the edge of my stamp and seal so that it can get it going easily without gripping the paper as it's prone to do Now, set that to the side, tuck in any glue, and this is where the fun begins. Take your flap, any one, and butt it up to the seam. So you've got your first corner. Turn the box and do the same. And repeat. And 
and repeat. And then I like to use my bone folder and I just like to go in and make sure all the glue, those strips are adhered nicely. So as you can see, because we only wedged the one corner, all our edges are nice and straight. So this is the inside of the box. I'm now going to set that to the side and we're going to repeat the same with the lid. So I've got the um, square there and I'm only wedging on the one side and I'm turning it around. And wedging. And the last one. Turn my box upside down so that it's now facing me. Bring in my silicon mat again. And I'm gluing on the two edges. So what you're doing is you're putting glue on that edge and that edge. And you're turning it around and repeating it. That one, and that one, and that's, oops, this one's caught, just, it's better, it's very shiny, this um, design is loose paper, it's like a foil, so one has to just be very careful when using the Stamping Plus, right, same concept, turn, turn, a little bit there we can trim turn and turn so if that bothers you you can always just go in there with your paper scissors and just trim just that little those little bits off Just make sure that goes away. Awesome. Now it's show and tell time. Have we done this correctly? If you have moved that little edge when we were lining it up to score it correctly, then this should fit beautifully, which it does. So there we've got our box. In a jiffy isn't that gorgeous so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the soft sea foam um, ribbon that matches with this and I'm going to pop it over here so we're going to go over the edge and over the edge like so and So we've got enough ribbon to make a beautiful bow. I'm going to do my surgeon's knot where I go through once, twice. Just secure it with my thumb. Tie it a beautiful bow such pretty ribbon okay tidy that up and now I'm going to make a label for it a Christmas label so I'm just going to use some scrap with um, some stamping I'm going to pop a message on there a Christmas message so I'm just going to get that stamped and then I'm going to create a, a tag so I've decided I'm going to take my sentiment from Hope and Peace and I want to say wishing you the hope and peace of Christ this Christmas. And I think it's this one, yep. So I'm going to stamp that up. And because we're working with soft sea foam, I'm going to do a dark green instead of a black. 
So I'm just going to ink that up with my Evening Evergreen. And I'm going to just stamp it there. Beautiful. So I often don't choose a, um, a dark, a black ink. I rather prefer to use a darker color of the same color scheme that we're working with. I'm also using the tailor-made tag dies, which are amazing. And for this one, I want my tag to be that size. So I'm using my little mini um, stamp and cut and emboss machine. This is a really cool little one to take with you on holiday. If you're going away and you like to store craft on holiday, very nifty little one to take with. And these dies are amazing because they come in sizes. So I'm going to do the next size up. So I'm going to put my tag to the side. I'm taking that scrap piece of paper that I said, oh, there might be a smaller piece. Oh, yep. I'm taking that scrap that I said, don't throw that away. And it comes with the coordinating little dudekis for the holes. So I'm going to run this one through my stem. Now we've got a die for that and we've got the little holes so I'll set that all to the side okay now let's just get this out if you didn't know your um, dies all have holes in them that you can poke the die cut out of if it doesn't come out automatically. So I'll pop that back. And we're now going to assemble this. So I'm just going to glue this together. I'm just looking for my glue. I'm going to glue this little hole or this little, um, yeah, this little circle. Oh, not to glue too much. I'm going to pop it like that. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of glue around this edge. Like that. Okay. Just give that an opportunity just to dry. Move those guys out the way. And while that's drying, I'm just going to bring back my box and I'm going to bring some gold twine. Look at it. It looks like, I don't know, something's happened to it. It's like when you buy um, cotton thread. It's just bizarre. So I'm going to thread this through and cut off about so much. And I'm going to take these ends and I'm going to pop it through the hole that we've just glued like that then I'm taking both those tails through and I'm pulling it now I'm not quite finished with this gift tag I want to use some of the gold leaf trinkets can you see that the gold leaf trinkets why does it seem so out of focus to that come with the splendid thoughts sweet and I'm going to thread it through like that and again I'm doing my surgeon's knot and I'm tying it like that Now you can do another bow here, or you can just leave your thread, it's personal preference. I quite like a bow on a bow, 
and I'll just trim that. And there we have a stunning, stunning, stunning box. So let me turn it that way for you. It doesn't really matter. It's still beautiful. So you've got a gorgeous handcrafted box that has such elegance. You can turn this into a birthday box as well. It doesn't have to be a um, Christmas box, but this is going to be a Christmas box for somebody that's going to receive a gift from me. So I hope you find that inspiring. Go and have a try with these dimensions. The card base 12 by 12 scored at 3 inches all around. Your box lid is 9 by 9 scored at 1.5 inches. And remember to move it just a wedge on each time you score it so that it fits snugly around the base. Thank you so much for watching and thank you once again to all of you that have been subscribing to my channel. I am so grateful for that. Until we meet again, remember stamp, eat, sleep, repeat. Bye!